Um, so here's a transmission line. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this concept from uh, Dr. Little's power systems course. Uh, but just as a brief reminder, um, we assume that the transmission line is broken up into these uh, infinitesimally small uh, portions, just calling the, the length here delta z. Um, so at high frequencies, um, the parasitic effects um, become quite apparent in RF systems. So resistors don't act like resistors, they have parasitic capacitance and inductance, things like that. Um, so the same is true for transmission lines themselves, they have parasitic resistance, parasitic inductance, capacitance, and conductance. Um, so with this model of the transmission line, again, of length, we're going to assume a infinitesimally small uh, width delta z here. Um, due to the spatial uh, variation of the um, voltage and current waves, Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws can't really be applied. But if we assume that the length is infinitesimally small, infinitesimally small, um, we can approximate using Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws. Um, so here we have the, the voltage and current written in phasor form. So we've done away with the uh, time variance here for, for the moment, but we'll see that again here in a sec. Um, so applying virtual Kirchhoff's voltage law around this loop, um, we arrive at this equation. Notice that there is a delta z here. Um, the impedance term is being multiplied by a delta z because the uh, parasitic um, resistance and inductance and capacitance, they are um, like a per unit length. Um, so the units for resistance in this case would be ohms per meter, for example. Uh, so we need to multiply by a unit of length in order to, um, to get the total uh, impedance of that little section there. But this is useful because uh, we can rearrange this formula. We can combine the voltages uh, you know, divide through by the, the delta z here. Take the limit as delta z goes to zero, and then our uh, difference equation here turns into a differential equation. Uh, we can do the same thing again, uh, the same thing at point A here, which Kirchhoff, with Kirchhoff's current law, end up with this equation, uh, do the same kind of ma manipulation, and end up with a another differential equation. Um, so you can see here that there's a, a voltage and a current, and a voltage or a voltage and a current here. So these two differential equations are coupled, and these are the um, coupled, uh, the phasor form of the coupled uh, transmission line equations. So one thing we can do with these, um, which provides us um, some good insight into kind of the physics of what's happening here. So if, take this first equation for a second, and solve for I, solve for current, uh, plug that into the second equation, um, do some basic manipulation. We end up with this equation here. Um, so if we we end up with the uh, phasor wave equation for voltage here, and this term here, gamma, is called the um, propagation constant. The propagation constant um, defines the uh, the speed of the the traveling wave and the wavelength. And we'll see how that's used later on. Um, so that you could have done the same thing with the with the second um, transmission line equation. You could solve for the voltage, plug it in here, um, kind of chug through the calculations, and the point is that you end up with another uh, wave equation. So you end up with two wave equations in. Um, one for voltage and one for current. Um, they both have this propagation constant term here. So what this tells us is that in RF systems, um, where there's voltage and current signals um, propagating on a uh, transmission line, um, those signals propagate as waves. So I mentioned the spatial variance. Um, so take this, take the wave equation for voltage here for a minute. Um, if you were to take an oscilloscope and place one probe at point A and then take another probe and um, co-locate it at, at point A, obviously you're going to measure um, <clears throat> the voltage at point A. 
but then as you move probe the, the second probe along the length of, tran of the transmission line, um, your voltage measurement is actually going to change. So here I just wanted to go through that derivation one more time just quickly, but this time rather than using the geez, rather than using the phasor form of the voltage and, and current, I'm going to look at the instantaneous voltage and current. Do the exact same thing, uh, but this time we're going to end up with some partial differential equations. Um, so these would be the transmission line equations, again, except they have these uh, partial derivatives. I guess this should be a partial derivative. I think I fixed it in one of the upcoming slides, but anyway, if you do the same thing, you solve for current and you plug it in to this equation, and you kind of plug and chug your way through exactly the same way that we just did last time. Um, you end up with with this equation here, which is sort of like a, um, a wave equation, except you have this forcing function on the right-hand side. Um, if we assume that the transmission line is lossless, which we will be doing for the entirety of this course, then you end up with a uh, standard homogeneous uh, wave equation here. Um, so the reason I wanted to show this is because if anybody studied, if anybody has ever studied uh, partial differential equations, uh, whether in math or physics courses, um, you'd recognize this as like you know the standard wave equation. So um, <clears throat> it's pretty common to um, the term that's in front of the uh, the time derivative here to write it in this way where you have the speed of the wave and the denominator squared here. In this case, that term ends up um, being defined like this. Um, so I just want to point out that this is called the phase velocity. And it's essentially the, the speed of the traveling wave uh, in the medium. So this is kind of a, an important concept because it affects the, uh, the wavelength, which is very important to us.